everyone, it's Emily Williams, the founder of I Heart My Life and your host of the I Heart My Life show. Today we have the amazing Kimra Luna here with us. She is a personal branding and online strategist. She's a single mom of three amazing little boys. She helps freedom-seeking entrepreneurs to stand out, captivate their audience's attention, and monetize their authentic brands online. And I've known Kimra for a few years. We started around the same time, and it's just been absolutely incredible to see her make her way from where she was previously all the way to the top and really stand out and serve so many people in her community. So welcome, Kimra. Excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. Very excited to be here. So I remember back in 2014, I believe we were both in B-School together. I remember? Yes, that's, that's where we met. That's where we met. And I remember interviewing you back then. I don't know if you remember, but I, I didn't know your full story, but I heard it on that interview and I was totally captivated by everything that you'd gone through, all the ups and downs and, and basically your huge mission for your brand. And at that time, you had really started to take off. And it was absolutely incredible just to see that huge shift. So you are a true inspiration to me and so many people. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, and I do remember that interview. And I was just like, I don't even know what I said in interviews back then. But, you know, I think I just shared my story like I always do. And, and that yeah. seems to so let's start there, because I feel like all my guests, they have some sort of I Heart My Life story where things really transform for them. And, and just hearing people's story, I find, is one of the best part of these parts of these interviews. So I'd love for you to take us back and tell us a little bit about your story that really um, contributes to where you are now. Yeah, so, you know, I get interviewed a lot and I get a pretty common question, which is like, what really motivates you? What really has made you even want to achieve the things that you've achieved? And it really all stems back to my childhood. You know, I was raised in a very abusive home. Um, I wasn't raised in what would be a happy family. Um, I was raised on welfare my entire life. And, um, you know, I, I never saw wealth as a bad thing. I never saw, you know, people that were having success as bad in any sort of way. I actually always thought they were amazing because they were like donating to all these nonprofit organizations and they were like saving the kids in Africa and all this stuff, you know. And I was just like, wow, these people are so great. I want to be able to be like that when I grow up. And I remember because of all of the abuse and all the kind of chaos that was happening around me, I really felt like I was trapped in a cage. I felt like I couldn't escape my family. By the time I was like, you know, nine, 10 years old, I was like constantly like running away and like trying to get away from them all the time. And, you know, spending as much time as possible at friends' houses because I just didn't want to be near them. And, you know, it was really something that um, I really just sought freedom. Freedom was is the my main goal in life is to seek that and go after that and I think that even now the name of my business is called freedom hackers it kind of all like led into that I really have just been seeking that freedom um, as a, as I was 17 years old I started booking concerts for a living and started my own booking agency um, and it started working with different venues booking bands on tours and things like that and I was having a lot of success at a pretty young age um, and I got to travel all around and meet all these new people. And I come from a very, um, you know, small town in Nampa, Idaho. Um, and it was small when I was a kid. It's a lot bigger now. But it was really like a small town. Everybody knew each other type of thing. And then I got to explore the world. And I feel like that was another big shift for me as well. Like I got to see all these different people, all these types of lifestyles, different types of backgrounds, all of this stuff that I never got to see in my little sheltered place. Um, so every Everything I think has been just it's been seeking freedom freedom and and meeting all those new people was a form of freedom being able to travel was the form of freedom you know and then of course starting my own businesses have always been a part of my freedom too that's incredible and when you were 17 where do you think that entrepreneurial spirit came from was it just that quest for freedom or where did that come from for you it was mostly just fun like yeah. I was like I love these punk bands and I want them to come to my you know small place in Idaho and like I'm just gonna send them emails from like as I open the CDs and look inside the record like the the little pamphlet that comes inside of them you know the little book and it has like their email address I just started emailing them from my old AOL email address that was called midget mohawk girl that was my name back then. 
on AOL, and um, and I would email them from there and say, hey, you want to play our you know crappy place in Idaho? And uh, some of them started saying yes, and it just like started from there. It was mostly just like I'm just gonna keep having fun, and and as I did it, I was able to to grow a business. Wow. And now, you know, you're, you're obviously not doing the same thing, the same type of work. So take us back to the transition to doing the work you're doing now in the current business. Yeah. So after I, you know, was growing, doing booking concerts and touring and all these things like that, um, I had moved to California. I met my um, my husband, who's soon to be ex-husband, but I met my husband and um, I um, ended up pregnant after we were together for about a year. And that was the, at the same time, 2008, was when the economy was really tanking. So booking concerts wasn't really a logical thing to do anymore because it was such a luxury item for people, you know, to go to a concert. So people just weren't going. And um, so anyways, the, the my, my business was already starting to tank. And so, you know, I ended up having to get just like regular jobs, which was like very bizarre to me because, you know, I, I'm not very good at working a job because, I don't know, bosses just don't like me. I'm too different, I guess. Um, and anyways, once you have your own business, it'd be really hard to go into a job environment. Yeah, it was like, what, I have to be here at a certain time? Like, I don't know. So so anyways, I, I, you know, I ended up being on welfare. So I'm pregnant with my son. I have no money. My ex had no money either. He didn't have, you know, a college degree or any lots of experience. So it was very difficult for us to get jobs. And there was the huge entire market crash. Like, literally, my son was born, and, like, that was when the market was crashing. And especially in California, the economy was so bad. My neighborhood became basically, like, a ghost town. All of the people had, were kicked out of their homes, like, and, it, I mean, it was just, it was really horrifying. Um, and, um, and anyway, so it was very difficult for us to get jobs. I ended up on welfare for three years, living at my in-laws' house, just living in a little small room. My second son was born during that time. And, um, you know, I had spent all that time, though, listening to personal development, you know, listening to Abraham Hicks and all this stuff. And I was like, I'm going to manifest this an awesome life. Like we're going to do it. And, um, after my second son was born, I'm sitting there in the hospital holding him. And I'm just, I'm feeling like a complete loser at this point. I'm like, I was raised on welfare. I never wanted to raise children this way. Like I want us to have our own home, our own car, our own computer, our own things, you know? And, um, so that we, so that I could put them in soccer so I can afford those things that they want to do when they grow up. And, and, um, you know, that, that, that urge, I think finally got us to manifest a job for my ex-husband. And so he got a job. Um, we ended up moving to Virginia in the middle of nowhere, a town that has literally 5,000 people. And, you know, I am there, you know, looking all weird, like how I look and you know I can't relate to any of these people so I'm just like literally like secluded I'm like great now I'm in jail again like that's what it feels like you know like I'm stuck it was like a little thing I was like okay well I have my husband and I have the kids this is you know pretty chill I guess but I wanted more and I um, decided to ask my my husband if we can get a computer because we didn't have one and he said well when the tax return comes I think we can get a computer so I got an iMac because I was like, I'm just going to get the best one because I wanted to write a blog. And so I, I had, and I had only had a phone at the time and I was already running different Facebook groups and, and all these types of things. And I was like, I really want to put what I'm putting in my Facebook group onto a blog. And so I got my computer and I just started Googling like how to start a blog, how to make money with a blog. And I started finding all these people were having so much success, like writing a blog. So I was just like, all right, I'm going to go crazy on this. So I started doing that and there I am just like this like stay at home mom and I'm just like holding up my phone, filming videos and posting them on YouTube and on all this stuff and I ended up growing a pretty um, large following. Um, my YouTube channel had about 25,000 subscribers and this was like with no video editing or like anything. I was just throwing things up there. And what were you and, talking about? What was the blog about? Um, it was a vegan mama's blog. So it was called, my. I had a Facebook group called the Vegan Mama's Tribe and I actually still have that group and then um, I had the name of the blog was called the misfit mama because you know the misfits are like one of my favorite punk bands right um so it seemed fitting yeah. and um and anyway so it was like this vegan mommy blog and it just started growing it really exploded and by the end of a year that i had gotten a hundred thousand unique views on my blog in a month 
And I had a friend who happened to be an online business like person and he just randomly messaged me on Skype and said, Hey, I see you have that blog and it looks like it's getting some traction. Like, like how, how are things going? And I was like, Oh, it's really great. I got like a hundred thousand unique views last month. So it's really growing. And he was just like, how did you do that? What are you doing? Google ads? Like what is going on? Right. And I was like, I don't even know how to use Google AdWords. And he's just like, well, you need to tell me what you're doing. So we got on a Skype call and I told him, oh, I'm using this thing called Pinterest and I'm utilizing my Facebook group, my Facebook page, and I'm just using social media. And he was just blown away and was like, you need to do a training for my audience. And I was like, uh, okay. He's like, we're gonna do a webinar. And I'm like, I've never done a webinar. Like, what are you talking about? He's just like, it's okay. Just write up everything you know on like a Word document and then we'll talk about it. And I was like, Okay, so he gives me this link to Google Hangouts, which apparently was like new at the time or whatever. And so he gives me this link, I go on there, turns out there's like a thousand people or more on this thing. Because he had a humongous email list and he emailed all of them telling them wow. like, oh, she's getting all these unique views and all this stuff. And so, um, so anyways, my first webinar, which was really a total crap show, um, was in front of like insane amounts of people. Um, and I learned a lot of lessons though. I learned that it, it didn't have to be perfect. So that was one thing I learned and people still love it. Um, even if it's not perfect. Um, another thing that I learned was that, um, I just had a lot more value to give than I even knew. Um, there was so many people emailing me afterwards, like that was so valuable, you know, all this sort of stuff. And I was just like, wow, like this is amazing. And then I started getting clients. So I had already sold like one digital thing of my own, which was like a recipe, like ebook thing. Um, so that was the only digital thing I'd ever sold. I maybe sold like five of them or something. Like I wasn't really making like a lot of money or anything. And um, so I sold like a few of those. Um, but then, um, you know, I did this, this training on how to utilize Pinterest and people were just asking me, hey, can you coach me on this? Like they just wanted to learn whatever was in my brain, right? So I had my first three clients, they, I charged them $300 because I didn't know what to charge. So I was just like, uh, $300 and I'll help you. Like, I didn't know what to do. Right. <laughs> so they paid me, they sent me in on PayPal. So I was like, Oh, okay. Like let's do this. And I didn't even do client contracts. So sorry to those people. I should have done contracts. I'm, yeah. I apologize. That was years and years ago. <laughs> um, but anyway, I didn't know what to do. Right. So I just, um, I started working with them and it turns out it, it wasn't just their Pinterest that was bad. It was like, all their social media, their websites were so bad, you couldn't even figure out how to check out or buy things. And um, I ended up, you know, kind of rebranding all these people I ended up working with, which, I mean, that probably would have been like 20 grand worth of work, like now. Um, but, but anyways, I helped like rebrand like their whole businesses. Um, one of them, she was um, a jewelry designer and she was making literally zero sales and she'd already been doing her business for two years. She made zero sales. She was like, I am like $150,000 in debt. She's like, I need to start making sales. And she was able to start making sales within just a few weeks of working with me. And so that that's what really built me the confidence. Yeah. I was just like, oh my gosh, like I really can help people. Like they, there was a transformation happening. And, um, and then I ended up creating a course on how to use Pinterest to grow your business, but nobody bought it because my blog followers only cared about, you know, recipes and like right. random I was doing with the kids or whatever. Like they didn't, they're like, I don't care about it. You know, they weren't business owners and they weren't bloggers either. So they didn't care. Right. So, um, I ended up, um, listening to uh, Brennan Burchard, which I know you, you really like him. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, um, he, uh, he said this thing. I was just like watching this video. He said this thing. He was like the experts industry is the biggest industry like in the world. And I was just like, really? You know, I was just like, got me. Okay. like, I know I'm an expert at this. So like, I, I know I can get people results and maybe I should just start a whole business just on me being an expert. Right. And that was really the point where I decided to, to scrap my mommy blog and decide to, you know, create my current business, which was just to help people, train people, show them how to use tools to build an online business. Because I learned it all DIY. Like I didn't, I never took any courses. I was already doing all this. I hadn't even taken like one online course. B-School was like really the first thing I even took. Yeah. But I mostly took it to find other entrepreneurs because I was like, where do these people hang out at? You know, <laughs> like, like that was like my main goal. Like I need some friends. Like I'm really lonely in this little town in Stewart's draft, Virginia. <laughs> like I, 
I was just like, I'm alone, you know, I needed people. So that was like the reason I was like, let me in here. And then I met you. So amazing. Know? It's such We're an incredible perfect. story. And I love that you followed your intuition. You've kind of followed some of the clues and all the little things that came your way and started to listen to other people who opened doors for you and just kind of like kept following the breadcrumbs. And I think so many people wouldn't have the confidence to actually do that. But it's obvious that you know, with every step, your confidence grew and you wanted so badly to transform your life and impact other yeah. people. And it just, and it I had nothing happened. to lose, you know, nothing to lose. Yeah. You know, like I was just like, I should just go all in. And if I just, and if I fail, whatever, who cares? I'll just do something else. Like, you know, like it, like to me, I was just like, just, just do it, you know? And, and so it was scary scrapping my blog. That was kind of terrifying. I had like over 150 blog posts. And like I said, I had had a huge following and I still get emails to this day from people that were like, I missed that blog you had, like from the old email address I had attached to it. And I was just like, Oh, you know, I, I, I mean, I could have kept it going, but like at that point I was, I was just so excited to get on these webinar things because that guy, it's like, it's like he gave me the taste of one. And then I was just like, I need to keep doing these. Like, they're so good. I need to keep doing it. And, um, and that was really, really what I wanted to do. And it didn't take too long before I started getting a lot of clients to help me to, you know, a lot more clients. Um, I started selling like smaller digital courses. Um, I started, um, my freedom hackers business in May, 2014. It is actually like, I think in the next few days is like my four year business anniversary. So super excited about that. I think I'm gonna have Amazing. a party next weekend or something, or just meet up with friends or something. I was like, Oh, four years. Um, most businesses don't last that long. So um, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm like, wow, I can't believe I made it this long. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I really just wanted to help people and serve people. So I just started growing. And then um, I ended up launching um, a program, which was actually based off of what all the clients asked me. I was like, oh, on every call I was on with them, I was like, oh, I can make videos on this. Oh, I can make videos about that. I can make videos about that. Oh, I can just make this gigantic course. So I decided to launch a course called Be True Brand You. And it was, at the time, I think it was 12 weeks. Now it's 16 weeks. Um, but at the time, I didn't really know how to even, like, launch properly. And so I was just like, oh, I'll just do a bunch of webinars, and maybe that'll get people to buy, right? And so that was, like, my method. And I still do that method now. <laughs> and, wow. um and um, anyways, the first launch, I did $65,000 in sales. And I was so blown away because I, of course, never made like that much money in like a month time, like yeah. ever. You know, I was just like, what is going on with my life? And, you know, it was just because I was building momentum. I just kept staying in front of my audience very, very consistently, talking with them, building relationships with them, um, you know, serving them the best I could. And, you know, so the launch ended up being like really, to me, that was like monstrously huge. And um, especially because my email list was very, was still very small at the time. And, um, and anyways, I just, I love doing these webinar things. So I just kept doing them. I kept doing them. Um, okay. at the same time when that launch was happening, I end up pregnant with my third son. So I'm not only like building this business, like just as like, Oh, I'm just like this stay at home mom and I'm taking care of my kids. Oh, now there's another one on the way. Oh, great. Yeah. I remember uh, you hosting a webinar and you were eating crackers because you had like morning sickness or something. And I you was were pregnant. so so nauseated that whole pregnancy yeah. the whole entire pregnancy it was uh, my other two pregnancies weren't that bad that this third one is just like I was so nauseous I was eating crackers and and lollipops and drinking soda and all sorts of soda water and all this stuff whenever I was doing webinars because I like had to or I was gonna like vomit everywhere uh so which would not be very sexy on a webinar like right. I just that would be uh, appealing to people. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I started growing that. I ended up doing a Black Friday sale. I did about 40000 in in sales in one day, which again, I was just like, what the heck is happening? So it was like six months in business. I had already done 100000 in sales of just that program, not counting yeah. all the clients and Incredible. things that I had and I didn't even have a VA at the time. It was literally just me. Um, my ex had quit his job because I had been, you know, making more money than he was. I was like, you might as well just, you know, come and help me with some of this stuff. Right? Yeah, I think you yeah. did that. You guys did that before James and I, you know, ended up transitioning him out of his job. And I was like, James, she's working with her husband. He got to leave his job. We have to do that too. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it, it really, and I had a lot of other people tell me, like, you inspire me to retire my husband. Like, he works, like, this really hard job, and I just want him to be at home, and he can help me with my business. I was just like, well, if that works for you, awesome. You know, do it. Um, some people, their husbands just still want a job anyway, so, you know, right. whatever. <laughs> um, some, some people like their work, you know. Um, but anyways, it was it was really exciting for, you know, him to be able to be at home, be with the kids more, um, and, you know, he's able to help me with some of the back-end things in the business um, and then um, fast forward I ended up I was in Virginia and moving back to California where we were from um, because I wanted to be with the same midwife I had my other kids with so I moved back to California and in February 2000 let's see February 2015 I ended up launching my program again and there I am like all pregnant and all waddling around everywhere um, and I ended up doing seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in sales Wow and that took you, I mean, I know that you, it was, it was less than a year. Yeah. Incredible. So I want to pause that, here just for one second and just say how amazing that is. And then we'll take a break in a second, but you know, that's so, it, it's so inspirational to see everything that you achieved in literally less than a year. It's amazing. Thank cool. you. Thank all you. Right. When we come back, I want to pick up right here and ask you a few questions that I think will really help all of the listeners. So we'll be back in just a second. Do you want to learn how to make and attract more money in your business? If so, my iHeartMoney Live program is for you. It's a 10-week program where you can jump in, learn all about money mindset, how to transform the way you think about money, your relationship with money, and in turn, make more money in your business. So if you're interested, go to iHeartMoneyLive.com. Hey everyone, it's Emily Williams. We're back with Kimra Luna and Kimra just finished telling us all about her story, literally in her first year of business, having multiple successful launches, one of which earned her over $700,000 in sales. And this is someone who was on welfare, never knew anything about online business, literally taught herself. And from what I see, you used your intuition a lot in everything you did, Kimra. So I want to talk a little bit about intuition now, because I know that that also led you to create a seven-figure business eventually, I guess a few months after that. And I see intuition in, in most of what you do, not everything. And I see you really putting your personality and your mark on everything in your brand. And I think that's really important to talk about and to highlight for everyone listening. Yeah, I'm intuition has been something that's always been very important to me. I remember when I first moved um, away from my my home because I'm from Idaho. I ended up moving to Seattle like right after I graduated high school, and it was just like an intuition. Like I had some friends moving, and I was just like, you know, that place is going to be good for me. And I moved there. I ended up making like having incredible jobs, and it was also the first time where I was really like I, that freedom like started, where I was like I'm on my own and I'm taking care of myself, and I'm like wow, like I can actually like pay for my own food, like you know, like it was like just so aha type of thing for me. And when I was there, I you know I was able to discover so much types of diverse people and build relationships, and and I started learning that my friendships were most so much more important to me than necessarily family because I didn't have a very nice family. Some, a few of them are nice, but like, I, you know, it's like I didn't want that relationship with them anymore. So it really helped me just grow as a person, but it really helped me navigate my intuition and my feelings and like what was going on with me. Um, and because I spent a lot of time alone, like I didn't have like a boyfriend and things like that. Like I was just kind of like myself and that really helped me, you know, be able to, to kind of tune into who I was. And I really needed that. That it was about a year time that I was just like, single just by myself and that really helped me um and of course I was really young too so you know I'm not but I'm like I'm trying to learn like who am I right and um you know fast forward you know I was doing all these concerts and all these things and um I ended up moving to California because I figured I'd be better for my career right there's a lot more you know bands and concerts and things down there and so I moved to California and every single step of the way it was just so intuitive it was like the first people whose couch I crashed on like they ended up being able to connect me with these certain people and then I get to that person and they're able to connect me to this person and it, it just and then 
I mean, within months, I was already hanging out with, like, millionaires, you know? Like, and there I am, like, this little poor chick, like, trying to, like, book concerts, you know? Like, I was just like, uh, okay, like, I guess I'll hang out with you guys, you know? And, um, but, and that experience, too, also made me realize, like, wealthy people are just real people, you know? And so I needed that clarity. When I'm, like, hanging out with people, they, like, live in Beverly Hills, and I'm, like, at their home, and I'm just like, wow, like, like, you're not just a bunch of greedy jerk faces. Like, you know, like, you're really nice and generous and loving people. And that was something I needed, too. And I think everything is, like, this divine timing thing. Like, I needed to see that wealthy people were very nice and, and yeah. really caring in order for me to be able to, to know that I can be okay with that. Because I grew up so poor, you know? Yeah, I think and that's so important to might- highlight because yeah. in a lot of my programs, we talk about money mindset and we talk about whatever you judge, you block. And so when you're judging people for making money or saying that all wealthy people are greedy or whatever it may be and living up with that mindset, then you're going to block wealth from coming into your life because you yourself don't want to judge yourself. And if you're thinking everyone is evil who has money, then you're not going to attract it to your life. That's so powerful. Yeah. And I think that, like I said, it was kind of like a divine timing sort of thing. Like all these things, they all played out really well, but it was always following just my intuition, what felt good, you know? And it was funny because all of that was happening before I even learned about personal development. I was like doing that just out of like, I'm just going to do what feels good. Like, I don't care if anybody says, I'm just not going to listen to what anybody says. I'm going to do what feels good. And even when I moved to California, I literally had people that were like, oh, everyone's going to be backstabbing you there, blah, 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 like saying all these bad things. Because, you know, I come from Idaho, a little small town, and they're just like, you can't live there. You know, you won't survive. You're going to be back in like a month and like saying all these things, you know. And I was just like, that's actually not the case. Every person I met is like really nice and really awesome. So, um, you know, that was a big kind of pivotal thing for me. I know that that was something that really shifted my money mindset was like hanging out with people that were really wealthy and successful musicians and having, you know, successful lives and successful, you know, families and marriages and everything. And, you know, that was something where I was like, wow, like I can have these things. Um, then, um, a very traumatic thing ended up happening to me. Um, so, so, you know, I was still like booking concerts and doing all these things. And one of my friends who was from one of the bands that I booked um, ended up raping me at a party. And um, that was kind of a big thing for me because it's like I, I didn't know what to do. It was like the first time I, I was like, I don't know what to do right now. I didn't know if I should tell people. I didn't know if I should go to the police. He lived in another state. I was like, what is going to happen? And then if I tell everybody, he's friends with all my friends. So I was like, if I tell everybody, am I gonna lose every single friend I have? Because like I said before, I didn't really have family to really depend on, all I had was friends. So I ended up not saying anything and it became a very, very lonely time for me. Um, I still ended up like going on tour. I ended up going on this one tour and anybody that's on the tour with me would know like how depressed I was during that tour. It was really, really, really rough for me. And um, you know, they, couldn't figure out what was going on with me, you know, because I didn't, I didn't want to tell anybody what had happened. And, um, and I ended up actually holding that in for 10 years. I didn't tell anybody, even my, even my ex-husband, like nobody knew. I barely started like telling friends like maybe a year and a half ago. And, um, and anyways, I ended up meeting my husband about three months after that point. And he was the one that introduced me to personal development. I was having like panic attacks. I had high blood pressure. Um, I was like freaking, I was just freaking out. Like I wasn't yeah. able, like, I, and, and even sometimes I even had said to him, I said, I don't know why you even wanted to even date me. Like I was like crazy at the time. Like I was not able to function. And, and I think he just saw something else in me. And so anyways, he introduced me to personal development. He had me watch the movie, the secret. And at first I was just like, what? You just changed like your beliefs and like, you can make your life better. Like, I don't know about this. Like, <laughs> but I guess I might as well try. Might as well try. What do you have to lose? Like, there's nothing to lose. I guess yeah. I'll, I'll try to be more positive, you know, and 
I was a major complainer. I worst complainer ever. I don't know. I don't even know how I had any friends to be honest. Like I was such a bad complainer. Like I would never have been friends with myself. That know how I was back then. Um, but anyways, I you know I started shifting my mindset. I started just changing little things here and there, and things did start getting a lot better for me. Um, I wasn't able to afford therapy, and so books and like you know Wayne Dyer basically like helped me oh, heal. I love Wayne Dyer. Like like Wayne Dyer legitimately helped me like heal from yeah. my race. You know, What's your favorite book so, of his? Um, oh, they're all so good. Um, but really, it was more like some of his lectures, like okay. things like I just like listen to his speeches, and I would just yeah. listen to them over and over his voice again. Is amazing. Yeah, it was just so soothing, yeah. and I just felt like he was like healing me, like right through the words he was saying. And so, yeah. and he keeps it so simple too. That's he why I, I, I loved Wayne so much, and I was so devastated when he passed away. I was like crying for like five days because it, he was so important for me um, in my journey. And you know, in any ways, I, I I find my ex husband, and I ended up sticking with him because he felt so safe to me. I was seeking safety, and that safety was a really good thing. That safety allowed me to grow. It allowed me to blossom. It allowed me to heal, you know, um, because he's just a safe person. He's like not violent in any way or aggressive in any way, and and so that really, you know, that was really like I said, it was like a divine timing sort of thing. It, it had to happen at that point, and um, it was it was so important for me. And even though I didn't tell him what was going on with me, you know, I knew that he cared about. Just just me as a person and that alone was another thing that was so healing for me as well so having yeah. a, a big partner when you need to heal is so crucial um, especially I mean it was it was kind of crazy that like I didn't go to therapy I'm still kind of shocked I'm like sane you know um, but I know that I needed all those personal development books I went like hardcore in personal development yeah because just I was like I have to heal I have to heal and and it took really 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 hard work um, what I do think you think my, were some of the biggest mindset shifts that you made that really contributed to you getting to where you are now and seeing success in your business? Forgiveness, uh, forgiveness of myself for things that I had done, forgiveness of people in my past who have done things to me. Um, that was definitely the biggest and hardest thing for me to swallow. But the second I was able to forgive myself for anything that I had ever done, because I think it's harder for yourself almost than to forgive other people. And once I was able to forgive myself uh, for, you know, attracting horrible things into my life and for, you know, just not making the best decisions all the time, you know, that to me was like what has made my business successful. Because I know if I make a mistake, I can forgive myself. Mm. You know, and I can still keep moving forward and not, you know, beat myself up if I do something that's wrong or, or I, or I, you know, oh, I should have did this thing instead. And now I lost all this money, which does happen. You know, I'm like, oh crap, I spent 30 grand and I ended up losing a hundred. What the hell? You know, like, <laughs> dang it. Like, you know, so things like that do happen. Um, but I'm able to forgive myself and keep moving forward. Um, another thing was just, I think, realizing how actually resilient I really am. Um, sometimes I forget that I'm resilient. Um, you know, when you're in the middle of a, of a big problem or something, you're just like, oh my gosh, you know, you're just really, you know, you're at the point where you want to give up. You have to remember there's always something that you have made through that was a lot harder than what you're currently going through, at least both majority of the time. And That's so, so true. And that, even when you're at the bottom, like, you know, there's nowhere else to go but up. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So I, I was at this point where, you know, there was like a big thing that I had done in my business. I was like, oh my gosh, like that wasn't very smart. Like I really should have, you know, done things differently. Um, but I've been through way worse things as a kid. Like, you know, I was like, I forget. I come from like a crazy abusive family and I escaped that. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I was able to end the cycle of violence. I became a conscious parent where I'm not beating my kids, you know? So it's like, I was able to shift a huge thing, camera. Hello. So it's like I got to coach myself, you yeah. know, and so I'm doing that all the time. Um, another that thing that's really, really important to me is journaling. Um, journaling has been, I would say, the most crucial thing that has helped me grow my business, helped me build relationships, helped me just be happy in life. Mm -hmm. What's I'm your routine to with journaling? So I have a few different journals. I usually keep like a stack of journals. It's really funny. Like I'll go to like my boyfriend's house and I have like eight journals with me. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, well, 
if I'm going to be here tomorrow, like I need a journal, you know? Uh, so anyway, so I have one journal that's just my dreams journal and that's just a journal that's like, and not like my dreams, like when I'm sleeping, but like the things that I dream the, um, my life to be like. Yeah. And so I like to write down, I have like different sections in it. Like one part's like for relationships, one part's for, you know, abundance and wealth. One part is for, you know, my kids and family. Like I, so I have different sections. And so I write out like, you know, basically like what I truly desire in those things, you know, like I, I truly desire desire supportive loving people in my network I truly desire you know um, you know boyfriends that really love that I'm so ambitious you know I really like just all those types of things I desire so that's like one of my journals and I spend a lot of time visualizing those things I don't just journal them I more you know I more visualize what I write down um, let me ask you a question have, about that really quick. So yeah, one yeah. of my clients recently asked me about visualization and she said, when you're visualizing, do you actually picture yourself in that situation or whatever it is that you desire? Or is it like you're outside of yourself seeing yourself do what it is that you want to do? Most of the time it's like I'm outside of myself, like I'm floating above myself and I see myself doing the things. Like I remember I wanted to see myself doing like live events. And so like I saw myself like almost above my head looking down at me and then I'm like doing it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm doing it. And you don't know? you find like one of the most important things of visualization is feeling the feeling? Yes. Yes. And I, it was, I was like, what does it feel like to, to do that? And on the front of my dream journal, that's actually the sentence that it says. It says, what does it feel like? I oh, wish wow. I had a next I put them over there. Um, but, but yeah, it's literally the first thing on the front of the book says, what does it feel like? And so what does it feel like to have the supportive, loving relationships? What does it feel like to have a great, you know, network of people that want to connect me with other influencers? What does it feel like to, you know, have, you know, a family life where I can stop what I'm doing at any time and go and tend to the kids if I need to, you know, like I always make sure I have all of those things written down and sometimes things will just come to me throughout the day and I'll write it in. And then I read through it. I read like that dream journal. I read the whole thing every single day. Wow. That's yeah. So, so that and that's just one of my journals. Yeah, I love <laughs> I it. Have other ones that's more for like healing. Um, that particular journal is usually when I feel kind of like trash talk coming into my head, and I just like start scribbling down like all the things. And usually I'm kind of in this aggressive state when I'm doing that for some reason. I find like I, I get these like bad thoughts that'll kind of be coming to me and so I get kind of aggressive and so that book gets pretty shredded up a little bit uh, because I'm writing like so hard um but it it's like a thing where it's like sometimes I just need to get those things out and you know it's like sometimes you don't have time to go to the therapist or call your coach um because I do have a coach um but you know you don't have time to you know coaches are important people uh, but I don't have a time you know to to go to the therapist sometimes just writing those things out and then seeing are these things actually true? Is there truth in any of these things? And like 99.9% .9 of the time, there's no truth into any of that crap. None exactly. of it at all. And oftentimes and it's just, stuff you've just heard over and over and over <laughs> in your yeah, mind exactly. on repeat. And, and recently I was actually having a, a sales block right and I was like all this stuff was coming to my brain like you know you're you're not good at sales you know sales you know really sucks like that's not fun like you only want to do things fun in your business like why would you be so focused on like making sales and like all these just crap that was coming to me and I'm like hello camera it says I've made three million dollars in sales of my program when I log into my you know CRM software I'm like I'm obviously good at sales, you know, like, hello, camera, like, just stop it, you know, right. so I'm kind of like coaching myself when I'm like doing this journaling and stuff, but it really works for me. Well, and yeah, I'm I tell my students all the time, you have to have an awareness of your thoughts, almost like you're on the outside looking in and just monitoring your brain so you can see what mm -hmm. you're telling yourself. Yeah, and even when I'm on the train or something like that, and if I don't have my journal like handy right there, or sometimes I'm standing, because you know, it's like sardines here in New York City. So sometimes I'm standing, so I can't really get my journal out and write or whatever. Um, I like to just open my phone and like put notes down for things for me to, to write about later, because yeah. I know if I'm having some sort of negative belief, maybe I'm even, you know, judging or criticizing somebody on the train or something. And it's like, yeah. Why am I thinking that way? Like, that's mm -hmm. not okay. Like, I don't want to be that person that's thinking those thoughts. So, like, let me journal about this, you know? So I'm, like, yeah. journaling about strangers, you know? <laughs> like, One of my you know? coaches says that in that moment, say to yourself, I forgive myself for judging, which I think is really yeah. powerful.
So. Oh yes, definitely. I I definitely will will agree to that. Yeah, because and I want to know why I'm I'm having those thoughts, why I'm having those beliefs, and Amazing. maybe it's because you know something was pushed it in my brain when I was a kid or something. But at least I can be aware of it. Um, mm-hmm. Self awareness is very 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 important to me, and you know that's when I you know I really have to kind of kind of figure myself out. And I think we're always going to be on that journey of figuring ourselves out. We never, we never arrive. Um, but you know, we, there is a journey, there is a journey, even though there's really not like the, Oh my God, you arrived and you're so enlightened. You're so enlightened. Yeah. It's like, okay, you're not Jesus. Like you're not getting to that point. Sorry. Um, you know, I want to pause here and I want to take a quick break because there's so much goodness in everything you just shared. And I really want people to go back and listen to this. Like, I mean, we could talk all day, I'm sure. Um, but everything you shared with the journaling and all of the work that you do around your mindset and your thoughts, I want people to go back and listen to that after this episode. All right, let's take a quick break and then we'll be back. And I want to talk about vulnerability because you mentioned that this is your year of vulnerability. So I want to hear more about that. Want to be the first to hear when new episodes of the I Heart My Life show are released? Go to iheartmylife.com right now and click on become a member. When you enter your name and your email, you'll also receive a free gift from me called Scared or Rich, Seven Practical Biz Tips to Moving Past Fear and Hitting Your Mega Money Goals. Hey everyone, it's Emily Williams back with Kimra Luna. So before the break, I mentioned that Kimra had said this is the year of vulnerability for her. So Kimra, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that and also where you see being vulnerable as really important in your business, in your life, all of the above, and how you feel other people can bring that into their own lives. Yeah, um, I decided for vulnerability to be my theme of the year. You know, everybody kind of picks their word for the year. Last year, my word was bold, and I didn't really feel I actually achieved it last year. I I ended up um, going through a separation with my ex-husband. We were together for 11 years, or maybe 12 years. I don't know. It was a lot of years. We were together for a very long time three kids and all sorts of things and and I didn't really achieve that uh, thing that I wanted to do is be as bold as I could. I felt like I was going through too much emotional stuff. I wasn't able to be that and I was like, okay, what's something I can actually be um, in 2018? And I felt vulnerable was really the thing that I could be. I still hadn't shared a lot of my story about, you know, the separation I still and how that's affected my business I still had it shared a lot about other things that I've been untangling especially in my journaling and things that are coming to me you know I haven't really um, done a lot of things like opening up about like my sexuality and those sorts of things um, and so I recently you know this year had decided I'm just like opening the floodgates uh, so to speak and it's scary and terrifying um, but at the same time I feel like I'm finally able to be the real Kimra, which is really funny because everybody has always been like, Kimra, you're just so Kimra, you know, and I am. I'm definitely very, very strong personality and I am me. Um, but there's all these pieces of me that my audience doesn't know. Like they really see like mostly the surface. And with my ex, you know, he wasn't super comfortable with me, you know, sharing about being raped, sharing about being molested and things like that as a kid. And, you know, now it's like I'm able to share those things. And I feel like my my mission has become even bigger because of it. It's actually expanded my brand a lot more. I have like a new blog that I'm starting called Sacred Mama. I you know it's really expanded me as a person by by me showing up in a more vulnerable way. And last Monday was actually my first time I ever came out of the closet publicly. Um, one of my uh, friends, Michael. He does like these events like once a month that are called the Legacy Show, and he brings in different people. Sometimes it's celebrities or whoever. And he and he we had been connected for a while, and he wanted me to to speak. And the topic was how to find love, and he wanted me to talk about how to find love in business. And I replied to his email and said, "I'm not going to talk about that." Uh, and he's just like, "Well, okay, I trust you. You know, just bring something great, right?" And so I I shared my story of like being a young girl and having so much shame for having crushes on girls and like, you know, being told I'm basically going to go to hell for it and like all of these things from like growing up in church and like not understanding like why I was having these feelings other people weren't having and, you know, praying to God every single night to like change me. I mean, it really made me feel like I, I wasn't me. 
you know, because I was like, I spent so many years asking God to change me. And, you know, and I'm not even religious or anything anymore, but, you know, I really, I really know that, like, that was something that was a very, like, negative, like, thing that I was repeating to myself constantly, like, change me, change me, change me, like, I wasn't me almost. And, um, you know, as, as a young girl, I, you know, always had crushes on, on only girls. I never had a crush on a boy until I was about 16 years old. And once I turned 16 and I had crushes on boys, I was like, oh my gosh, God finally has made me like normal. You know what I mean? And, um, but of course it didn't end up happening. I still wasn't normal. I still had crushes on all the girls too. Um, so, um, but anyways, it was like all of this stuff of trying to find that identity of who I am. And because I was raised in a place in Idaho, you can't really openly like be gay, especially back then. It was like really bad. I mean, you got the crap beat out of you if you if you were openly gay. It's a lot different now, thank, you know, thankfully. Um, you know, but I felt like it was finally time to come out about my sexuality. Um, really, the only people that knew were like very close friends of mine or like my ex-husband, like he knew. Um, but it's like I really wasn't able to say my whole story and so I decided to share and started to talk about you know all the things that I had been shamed for and so a lot of these things are barely coming up now after my separation with my ex I was like oh my gosh I was shamed for this and shamed for that and my own mother like wouldn't even like didn't even want me to shave my armpits because she said that's what 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 you know the 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 dirty girls do or the girls who are getting all the boyfriends do and you know all this sort of stuff and so there was so much shame around you know that part of me and so now I've decided to be more open about that and I actually have a big post I'm going to be posting um about it because I did get a video of the presentation I did where I was like sharing the whole thing I was like okay well there's a video I might as well just show that you know that's that's about as good as I can get um you know and I want my audience to know that you know I I have different you know elements of me that they haven't been able to see yet um I recently opened up and shared a post about racism and how you know I'm from a place that people are very racist and I am mixed myself but I'm what they call white passing and so I have this white privilege that I want to be able to understand I want to be able to dive deep into that I want to unravel those things and see what unfolds in there because I worked on all this mindset work but I didn't ever work on racism because I didn't really realize that that's a thing that's ingrained in like all of our DNA, especially if you're raised in the United States, you know? And so, you know, those are things that I'm like, I'm sharing those things. And yes, sometimes there's backlash on things that I'm posting. Sometimes there's people very upset with me about things I'm posting, but I feel like it's time. And I also speak up about all sorts of different types of activism and things that I believe in, you know, when it's coming, you know, going to protest and, you know, creating like groups about certain things and certain topics. I really feel like it's finally the year for me to just open it up and let everybody know like what is on Kimra's heart. And, and don't so you like, find shot, that people it's like will, bursting. it's like bursting. Yeah. <laughs> don't you find that there's always going to be people who love you and there's always going to be people who don't get you regardless. <laughs> and so you might as well be yourself. Yeah, and I mean, even family members, you know, I know, like, once some more posts come out about me, you know, being pansexual, because I'm also attracted to transgender people as well, there's there's going to be people in my own family that will probably never talk to me ever again, you know, and so being that vulnerable, where you are like, you know what, I'm willing to take those hits, and and you know, go through the grief that is gonna happen because it is gonna happen. So it's kind of like almost I'm preparing myself for a grief of losing certain people um, that I've cared about and built relationships with for 12 years. There's definitely people, you know, in you know my my ex's side of the family who I, I feel will definitely not be accepting of how I am. And you know, it's it's as raw as you could possibly get to know that there is literally gonna be grief that happens. It's different than like, because I remember when I was like, you know, pregnant and like the baby's about to come and you're just like, oh my gosh, I like prepare for this like big painful thing. This is very similar to that. It's like, I know I have to like mentally prepare for something that will be painful. Um, You're birthing a new life, so to speak. Exactly, exactly. And I know that that pain is going to be able to resonate with people in my audience and that is going to make me of more service to them. So I think that's I, how to look at it. Like with everything, I always tell my students, you know, what you're going through, it's not just in service to you and your own growth, but also to your clients and the people who follow you. Um, mm-hmm. That's so, so powerful, Kimra. Thank yeah, you for sharing I, that on vulnerability. 
So you're, you're welcome. Well, I figured I'd be vulnerable. We're talking yeah. about <laughs> I always say if I'm not like, if my clients aren't crying on our, on our calls or being vulnerable, then I'm not doing my job. And it's the same thing with this show. Yeah. So love it. last question for you. This is a question I love to ask all of my guests. I'd love to know how you've been able to create a life that's better than your dreams. Just one thing that you can share with the audience so they can do it too. I would say that building relationships and making sure relationships are good. Because like even with separating from my ex, he's still my friend. You know, I went through a really, really, really rough past week and I was still able to call him and cry to him and things like that, even though we're not in a romantic relationship anymore. I still have solid relationships. And it's the same thing when it comes to business relationships. I make sure I follow up with my friends. I check in on them. I say, hey, hope your launch is going well. I, you know, I, I like to keep those relationships good. So, and I study relationships. I like my favorite live streamer is uh, Tom Bilyeu and him and his wife have this live stream they do called impact or relationship theory. And I, you know, I make sure I'm always educating myself about about relationships, how to keep relationships good and well. And um, I know that that has been very, very pivotal for my success. I think that's so important in the online space as well, where it can get really lonely if you let it. And it's so important to have those connections and people who, you know, get you and are going through similar things. Yes, exactly. Love it. So where can people find you online? Um, the best places for people to find me is Facebook and YouTube. Uh, if you just search Freedom Hackers, you can find me, or if you search my name, Kimra Luna. Um, and then, of course, if they want some free business trainings or things like that, they can always head to my website, freedomhackers.com, and there's all sorts of freebies there. There's, like, spaceships flying around and all these things. It's an amazing I'm, website. I'm in, I'm in all these galaxy things, and so there's, like, literally, you choose a spaceship, and, like, you choose your little avatar, and then you fly it around and get all your little freebies and stuff. It's really fun. So <laughs> Love it. And what's next for you? What can people look forward to? Um, I am going to be launching my Sacred Mama podcast, um, hopefully within the next like six months. Um, I have my, my doors are opening to my Be True Brand You program in June. Um, and then I also um, have other businesses that I'm going to be opening that I'm not even actually able to say because I'm Ooh. working on investors and things like that, which is a whole other thing, selling physical products. I mean, I've sold physical products like on Etsy before, but never like a big type of thing. So where I have to like find investors and things like that. So um, there are a few big things that are coming for me. Um, another thing is I'm gonna do a lot more public speaking, a lot more sharing my story because this is my year of vulnerability. So any person that will have me on their stage, I am basically there, you know, so I'm, I'm doing a lot of that this year as well. So come out and see me. <laughs> Amazing, Kimra. Well, thank you so much. And to everyone listening, remember you too can create a life better than your dreams. Kimra is a perfect example of that. Truly anything is possible. Remember to trust your intuition, be vulnerable and never give up and remember how strong you are. Thank you so much, Kimra. Really, really appreciate it. It was incredible talking to you. I know everyone's going to be greatly impacted by everything you've shared. And I'm also greatly impacted by you every day and, and really grateful for our friendship. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you. Thank you for being such a great friend and bringing me on. You're welcome. All right, everyone. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the I Heart My Life show. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram at I Heart My Life Now. And did you know, I'm on the radio every single day. Visit americaoutloud.com to download the talk radio app so you can tune in at 8 a.m. Eastern and 1 p.m. GMT.